There you go. Well, let me just get the last bit of this off of here. This has only taken me, for something this small especially, uh, maybe only about 20 or 30 minutes. So, you remember how it was. So Again, this is kind of a um, black line cut here. Um, and since we got it done, I'm gonna show you how to um, ink up a block. And we'll see what we can do here. Uh, a lot of times I like to either get it in ink pretty quick so it, just in case there's any excess stuff I need to remove so we'll see that also here in the shop um, I like to use this cartridge ink um, to um, ink and print with so what I usually do is start out with just a little dab and uh, if you decide to do this sort of stuff at home You'll probably use like a tube ink like this. And they have that at the bookstore, whatever. It's oil-based ink. So for this step, you need some ink. I always like to add a little bit of petroleum jelly. Um, some people call it Vaseline, but that's a trade name. And we don't want to get in trouble by using that. So what I'm doing here is just mixing a little bit of that ink just to smooth it out, make it a little bit softer, uh, a little bit looser to work with. Um, and if you decide to do this sort of thing at, at home, you'll need some ink, uh, a spatula, a little paint scraper, um, either a piece of glass, a mirror, you can use a big flat tray, or you can even tape together a uh, magazine and use that. You also need like a three and a half to four inch sprayer um, to spread the ink. So what you want to do is get your ink all mixed together and lay out a band of ink and just roll it back and forth. As you push back and forth, lift occasionally and that'll kind of change the lap mark on it. And sometimes I'll go perpendicular to my initial roll just to flatten it out, even it out. Try not to go all over the, the palette, but you know, stay pretty close in. That way you don't have a big mess on your hands. So we got that nice and inked. You know, it looks velvety, it has a slight hiss. And that's what you want. If it sounds like a, oh, a sweaty person getting off a um, leather couch in the summer, that's too much. That or Velcro. So now we're going to take our block here and um, get some ink on it. Just kind of go edge to edge there. Turn your block. Maybe get a little more ink. You don't want to over ink this. And when you look at it, it'll have a nice even coat on it. If you if you need to get down and look at it, um, you can certainly do that. But that, that looks pretty good. But you know, I have some areas here. You know, that I don't want. That's called chatter. And what you can do is just take. And I'm using a little straight chisel here. Just kind of get up under it and cut it out there. Same here. You may have to get one of your other tools to clean it up a little bit better. But a lot of times I'll use this just to kind of get it cleaned off. Bad. But so you can clean it up as much as you want. Some people like the chatter in there. Um, and uh, sometimes I'll leave it you know, but if it's like a big broad area, I'll probably get rid of it. But this is cut pretty close to how I drew it. Maybe a few clumsy areas on there. And 
For me, the uh, um, black line cutting is a little static. Uh, it's less free flowing. Maybe because I don't want to take the, that much time to do a really refined drawing. Uh, a lot of times I like the knife to do all the talking instead of the drawing. So that's ready to print and we can, well, I'll show you all how to print stuff later. But the important thing is that unless I'm mistaken, my mother doesn't work here and I, well, maybe some of your parents work here, but uh, my mother doesn't work here for obvious reasons. And it's not that they don't pay it. So I'm going to show you how to clean up. Whenever you're done uh, with your ink, if you have a big wad of it, you can always put it in foil. Um, but this is America, so I'm going to be wasteful. And just get rid of this stuff. So um, you can use your scraper to get any excess up. And you can put it in like a phone book if y'all have such a thing or old newspaper um, or whatever you have uh, around. I try not to use too many paper towels if possible. And if you have one of these razor scrapers, you can certainly do that too. That gets a lot of the business up uh, off the box. But I'm going to get it dirty again. I, you can clean up with a paint thinner but that's kind of stinky. But I like to use vegetable oil or uh, baby oil to clean up, oil base ink. So what I do is I pour a little bit there and just run my roller through it. Like that just to kind of loosen it up. Then I take my uh, newspaper or phone book, just kind of roll it out a little bit on there use the smudge around on the glass palette. And you can kind of see that most of it's kind of loosening up and coming off. So, and, and this part always makes me jickety and nervous and palsy. Sorry if I'm supposed to not say that. But at this point, um, you can take, if you have a paper towel or whatever, you can use that to get the big chunks off. I just happen to have that there. but. The other thing is using a wet wipe or a baby wipe. This, these are really, they're not just for wiping baby butts anymore, um, but they're great for cleanup and art. You can clean up your oil paints with it, uh, your tools, and it helps reduce the use of solvents. So, this is pretty dirty to begin with, so. That's pretty clean. And then get your other tools and just wipe them off. You can also, if you have paper towels and don't have wet wipes, you can use a moist towelette. Do that so that's clean. And then I can take the rest of this and clean that up. You can probably use one or two of these, but... Um, there, quick, easy cleanup. Buh bye bye.